Okay, in this video we will be constructing the Lewis structure for CH2, CH, NH minus. I already have our atoms separated where they should be. The reason why I have this double sided arrow is because these are resonances and I'll show you which one is the better of the two. Make sure they're all enclosed in brackets and you have your negative, negative charge because this molecule is a negative charge on it. So before we draw it, we should figure out how many bonds this molecule should contain. And this is the formula I tend to use. Number of bonds equals demand minus supply all over two. Demand is how many electrons each atom likes to be surrounded by to have a noble gas configuration. So hydrogen falls that duet rule where it likes to be like helium. So likes to have two. Let me get the, there we go. Likes to have two. So does that one, so does that one, so does that one. Carbon and nitrogen like to have the neon configuration, so it has that octet rule. So I have eight surrounding it. Um, if we add all those up, that should be 32. So 32 minus our supply. Well, our supply is how many valence electrons each atom can actually contribute to the molecule. So we look at the periodic table. Hydrogen is found in group one, so it contributes one, and we have four of them. Uh, neon, neon. Nitrogen is found in group 15, so it has five valence. Carbon, four, because group 14. If we add all these up, that should be uh, 17, but we have this negative charge, so don't forget to add one. So that'd be 18. So 32 minus 18. Divide that by 2, and that will give us 7. So this molecule should contain 7 bonds. So let's do that. Hydrogen. Always connect your hydrogens first because we know they only have single bonds. Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 minus 7 is 3. We have 3 more bonds to give. So let's finish connecting our molecule. Okay, so where should I put this last bond at? Between these carbons or between the carbon and nitrogen? Well, let's do the carbon and nitrogen first. And now we have to fill in our remaining valence electrons because that does not equal 18 yet. And they need to have octets. So these will be our lone pairs. So we have an octet now on carbon and an octet on this nitrogen. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, which is our supply. So that checks out just fine. Okay. Now we need to figure out the, the formal charge on each of these molecules. You may be able to do it quickly, so those of you who don't know how to do it, I tend to use this formula, which is the valence electrons minus the lone electrons plus the number of bonds. And so we'll do this carbon right here. Carbon is found in group four, 14, so it's four valence minus the lone electrons, which is one, two, two lone electrons, or one pair, plus the number of bonds. It has one, two, three bonds. So that's more 4 minus 5, and that equals negative 1. So that would be a negative. I'll show you how to do the hydrogen real quick. Hydrogen is in group 1. It does not have any lone pairs, so it's 0, plus the number of bonds, which is 1. So it's just 1 minus 1, which is 0. And all of these hydrogens are only connected by single bonds, so we should know they're all 0. So let's do this carbon. Once again, carbon is found in group 14, so four valence minus the lone electrons. Does not have any, so zero plus how many bonds? One, two, three, four. Or you could say two singles or and, and a double. So a double counts as two, single counts as one, triple counts as three. Just to clarify that. Four minus four is zero, so that carbon does not have a charge. Let's check our final atom, the nitrogen. So nitrogen is in found in group 15, so that's five minus the lone electrons, which is 1, 2, plus the number of bonds, a double and a single, so 2 plus 1 is 3, and that'd be 5 minus 5, so that equals 0. So the charge is on the carbon. Now, I'm going to redraw this molecule the same over here, so I can show you what I'm doing, so it doesn't get really sloppy and confusing. So, all I'm doing is just redrawing it, so connecting our bonds. Okay, now let me fill in our lone electrons. 
And we cannot forget our charge. So let me do that. We have a charge on this carbon. And now what we usually do to create resonant structures is we go from the side of negative to positive. We don't have a positive in this case, so we'll just go from the negative side to the neutral side. So let's do that. We can carry this lone pair of electrons and make a bond right here. So let's do that. We're making a double bond right here. We got rid of these, this pair of electrons because we made a double bond right here. Keep in mind, this charge will move with electrons we just moved. So right now, this negative is on the carbon atom. So let's count how many electrons are surrounding this carbon. Two, four, six, eight, ten. We cannot have that as, as violating the octet rule. So what we need to do is break a bond. So we'll break this double bond and put the electrons over here. So let's do that. I'll make it cleaner. So there we go. That looks a lot nicer with these instead of a line above it. There we go. And keep in mind, this is still moving. So right now, our nitrogen has a negative charge. Now, that is what our resonant structure looks like. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So that checks out. And a negative, negative, yep. A negative, and a negative, yep. So which one is better of the two? Well, first, let's check these rules. Let me move these rules up here. So who's the best? Octet is always the best, but as we can see here, all of these atoms have octets, except for hydrogen, obviously it has a duet. So, number two, least separation of charges. So they each only have a negative, so they're equal still. So what's number three? Negative formal charge on the most electronegative atom. So which atom is more electronegative, carbon or nitrogen? Remember, electronegativity increases from this way, from left to right, or from the bottom to the top. And we know that carbon is here, and nitrogen is here. So nitrogen is the most electronegative atom, so this would be your correct structure, or it would really be your major resonance contributor, because what the actual molecule looks like is a combination of the both, but this would be your minor resonance contributor. So this molecule right here will contribute to the resonance hybrid, what the molecule actually looks like, but if it just asked for what is the best representation of the molecule, you would go with this answer. So that does it for this video. I hope it helped you.